Hey, what's up? Tyler here. And in this video, I'm going to show you the power of alignment and how some people do it incorrectly and how to actually do it the right way so that when you are aligning, you like the powers and the details. So be sure, check it out, follow it. And if you have questions on it, hopefully it'll answer it in this video. Check it out and we'll see you on the other side. If I'm in a, a state where I feel like something's happening to me, that could be a push or a pull. Do I feel in control at that moment? No. I feel like a victim. I feel like I have no control. That's because it's a fight flight response and something triggers you. So something comes along, initiates a pre-programmed response that feels like it's out of your control. That's the start of the problem. It's actually not out of your control. And it's actually 100% your choice. This is where it's going to start to get real and some of you are not going to want to listen from here on out. So I'm just going to invite you to keep your ears open. <laughs> Take full responsibility. Take your breath and be like, I can change. That's easy. That's easy. I can do that too. Okay. So what it means is there's no hiding anymore. Because every single thing in your life has a vibrational state and a vibrational resonance that if it's not serving you, it's either part of your body's pushing it away or holding on to it like two magnets. So if you think about like, so north, south sticks together and north, north repels, right? So if you think of that, like two magnets, that's kind of the reaction in your body. Think of your cells as these, these very intelligent parts of your body that actually store memory based on previous pains and disconnections, which is why a lot of the techniques go there because they think, oh, we got to find that and then remove it. But I'm not into that anymore. I just say, cool, you can acknowledge it and just reprogram it. You don't have to figure out why it's there or why the interpretation is. You just simply got to turn off the fight flight response. Reprogram, you're done. And it can happen in minutes instead of taking years of going through deep, deep, deep therapies like I've had to do. I'm going to show you these processes. For some of you, you're going to want to learn more and master this and get really good. So we do have certifications for that. We have mastermind programs. We have all sorts of stuff that we can share down the road if you want to explore that because more people need to learn how to change quickly. I believe today in today's age, it's even more important than ever before. Like with change happening so quick and AI and everything, I think we as human beings need to step it up and learn how to shift faster, learn how to get our goals faster, learn how to be faster, more effective human beings, be the Tesla type of lifestyle. Now, as you do this, so I'm going to show you guys here a little bit about why this works. So when, when, you, when you're going through life and you have these disconnections, these pains, most people say you got to get to the root of the cause of the pain, figure out the why, release it, go in, remove it, do whatever. And I, it always kind of irked me. I was like, removing things just implies that something's broken. And I was like, well, why does that just doesn't resonate with me in my deepest knowingness? I thought, what if we just altered it? What if we just changed it? What if we just chose something different? and getting back to choosing something and choice. So ultimately, aligning equals choice and choice equals power. If I wanna have more power in my life, I need to get my choices back. If I wanna get my choices back, I gotta get out of my fight flight responses. That's why I say the trigger is the transformation because the trigger shows you your fight flight responses that you need to align. When someone has a reaction, I get excited because that is the opportunity for them to make a huge shift. And it's going to give them more what? Power. More power in their life. We can all have more power. So what this means is if I have something in my life that I'm pushing away, that's an allergy, and something that's coming towards me that's not ideal, that's an addiction. And the goal is to put myself into 
a state of alignment. I've got to pinpoint where these fight flight responses are. And then I got to find a way to neutralize them, to just stop them from happening. Literally just reprogram them and say, hey, you don't have to freak out anymore. So this process of tapping, breathing, and smiling, super weird process, but it works magic. And here's why it works. When you're in a fight flight response, the first thing to go is your breath. So if some reaction is going on, people tense, and most of this is unconscious, just notice your breathing right now. How many, so take a deep breath right now. Some of you have forgotten how to breathe. So some of you are tightening when I'm talking. You're like, because you're like resisting and you're hearing truths and you're like, ah, ah, ah. already I see it in your body language and you're resisting it. So breathe. That's the first piece. So when you're breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth, you're putting yourself into a different state and you're taking control of your breath. The second piece to why this works is when you have a fight flight response that is stored in your cellular memory. Now it's kind of like muscle memory. It's a very powerful thing. So if I'm teaching an athlete or uh, someone who's a, you know, trying to, to excel in one of their crafts, like I've done people who, you know, do rodeos and try to, to catch things and then they lose. What happens is when someone goes into a place where they go through a, a trauma or something that's not ideal, they drop their state because of that disconnection or pain. So let's say I'm performing something non-ideal happens. Now, my memory retains that. And if it continues to happen, it's going to get used to it. And now that's why people lose and they, they only come in second place in the Olympics or they never make it to first is because it's ingrained in their muscle memory. Now, muscle memory can also be a teaching thing. You can drill something over and over and over and over and over and over and over. It's like piano. When I play the piano, it's not like my wife. <laughs> my wife has some good muscle memory for years and years of practicing. I'm like, twinkle, twinkle, little star. And then I'm like, wait, uh, 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 uh. and she's like, doo -doo 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 -doo, like going all the town. Right. And I'm like, how do you do that? Well, if you put in 14 hours a day of practice, you could do that too. Oh, muscle memory. Went to, when I first started, I went to 26 different companies in two days, teaching a message that I had no idea about to try to make some money because I needed to pay the bills for the next week. And I was a coach and a speaker all of a sudden uh, because I wanted to. And I didn't have any skills. And so I ingrained some really non-ideal feelings about rejection. And I went to Walmart to go and find people because I was so desperate. And Jim Rohn said, just go talk to more people. So I listened to him on his little uh, CD. And he was like, just talk to more. Talk to more people. Talk to 10, get one. Talk to 10, get one. Get better. Talk to 10, get two. So I did. And then I got really mad at Jim Rohn because I talked to like, 50 and I got zero. And I was like, man, I just suck. And it was because I had my muscle memory trained to have all these negative thoughts and non-ideal things to just, no matter what I did, it didn't matter because I programmed myself to not matter. So as I started to let go of those programs and redefine, I could talk to five and get two because now the meaning behind it changed the feeling behind it. And that's the difference. It's not in the action itself, but it's the feeling and the emotion and the thoughts and how you hold yourself and the messages that you send out. I wasn't sending out all those unconscious messages anymore. So the first thing to go is your breath. What we want to do is pinpoint the location of it. And then what we're going to do is while tapping, the reason why we tap is because you're producing little micro traumas that override the other trauma. So if you bring up a fight flight response, the moment you start to tap down the, the forehead, down to the back of the neck, you're actually sending an overriding signal and the body can only pick up on like one signal at a time. And so if I have a big thing coming up, ah, uh, anxiousness, anxiety, not getting money, whatever it might be, the moment I tap on that area, it's like harnessing it in place to where it doesn't get sent out to my body. That's why we tap the location of it. So we want to figure out where it's at. And then we want to go ahead and do what's called align, which is tapping on the forehead, 
going all the way back to the neck. So it's this bulge, the C7 here, and you're gonna breathe in through the nose. So everybody practice it with me. We're gonna go slow. So here's how not to do it. Just watch this, because I know some of you are gonna do this. You're not gonna pay attention. So this is how not to do it. Don't do this part. Don't do in and then back. That's not it, okay? You don't tap forward and tap back. That's not it. You don't do this either. You don't go. So I, I tapped once and I breathed in and out. That's not it either. So those are the two mess ups that most people do. This is how you actually do it. You tap while breathing in through the nose. Then you tap while breathing out through the mouth. You do that three times in a row. Now you go to the next part, which is panting while tapping. Three times. And smile. Okay, so that's it. It's simple. It's like really dumb simple. It's so simple, it's dumb. So people are like, there's no way. It's gotta be complicated and hard and years and blah, blah, blah. Now, how to apply it can be a little bit more complicated, but that's it in its simplicity, at its basic form, okay? So in through the nose, out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth, pant, 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 smile. What we're doing, the moment we bring up a trigger and you locate it immediately where you feel it, that's why when I'm coaching you guys, I'll, I'll ask where do you feel it and you'll see how I do it. And I'm going to take you guys through a process right now to do it on yourself. But you're going to pinpoint it, tap that area, and then we'll vocalize certain things. We're going to vocalize non-ideals or ideals. Because the non-ideal is what? Back to what I taught. The non-ideal is what? The addiction. Great. Good. The non-ideal is the addiction. So we want to address those. Because the moment you bring up the non-ideal or the negative, it's going to create that response. We want that to happen. So my positive thinkers out there, you're not going to like this process because we address the negative. You actually have to vocalize it. You have to bring it up. Now, the only reason my positive thinkers don't like saying negative things is because it has power over them. Because, I know, I know, I love you guys, but it's true because I wouldn't fear something that didn't have power over me. I could say, I'm a terrible dad. And it has no power over me because I know I'm a great dad. I could say, I'm dirt broke. And it's laughable because I know the truth. I could say I'm a horrible husband. And guess what? Because that word has no stickiness, because I have no addictions on that anymore, it falls flat. It has zero power. But for someone who has an addiction to it, it hurts. They're afraid of it. They don't want to vocalize it because they're afraid it's going to manifest into reality. And that fear breeds what happens. So part of this is getting over the avoidance and confronting things. Now, also some people avoid saying ideals. You could say, cool, I make a million dollars a month. Even though I haven't hit that yet, that's my goal. So I could vocalize that, but internally I might have a dialogue that says, that's a lie, that's not true yet, you can't do it, you're not there yet. You've only done half a million. You haven't done a million to do it. You're going to have to work a lot harder. You're not going to do it. all these things. Blah, 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 blah. And those are the addictions. The allergic response is to the million and all the addictions are holding that, keeping it from, from manifesting. So I actually want to vocalize those, tap where I feel it and align it. Okay. So you could do positives or negatives. doesn't matter. The thing is, is, and, and this is going to tweak you out, but you, it, it'll work no matter what, because the allergic response and the addicted response are equal. So you could say positives and align it. You could say negatives and align it. I just tend to do the one that you avoid the most because that's the one that has the heaviest part on it. 
So now that you've learned a little bit about the power of aligning, if you'd like to experience this in an immersion experience, we're actually doing another three-day event virtually that you can check out. Just click the link below and experience this for yourself so you can actually go through the full process and see in real time changes in your life, whether it's in health, wealth, or relationships. We have all sorts of cool topics that we do it on. So check out in the description of, of this uh video that you're watching should be a link that'll take you to that next level. So check it out. And I look forward to having you at our next three-day virtual so that you can master yourself and get into a state of transformation any time of the day. Was it me? No, it was each and every one of you. So we all chose to do that. No one forced you. No one made you. You chose, which is freaking awesome.